five terrifying U.S. government projects. Number five, Project 112. Project 112 was done at a desert test center in Utah in a series of tests from 1962 to 1973. Nearly 6,000 people, both military personnel and Department of Defense civilian staff, were exposed to the tests with and without knowledge. When information about the tests was released, it was thought that the agents released were harmless. However, there is a long list of biological agents that the test subjects were exposed to, including Coxilia burnetti, also known as Q fever, and Staphylococcal enterotoxin B, which causes food poisoning. They also used some pretty horrific nerve toxins, including sarin, now classified as a weapon of mass destruction, and somen, a clear colorless liquid that can cause death in minutes. Both can be fatal if only the tiniest amount gets on your skin. Number 4. Project Artichoke Even the NSA's archives and security research staff only have bits and pieces of what's been called Project Artichoke, which involved experiments using so-called special interrogation techniques. It's been uncovered that experiments with hypnosis were conducted through the 1950s, and at least six volunteers were found to have been subjected to experiments on the psychological impact of total isolation. Buried in the memos was a bizarre mention of using assassins who were hypnotized into killing. Central to the CIA memo was trying to figure out whether or not it was possible to take someone already in custody and program them to kill. The memo states that the person had originally been acting on behalf of the government, but had become less willing. Number 3. Operation Plum Bob. Between the 28th of May and the 7th of October 1957, military personnel were exposed to 29 nuclear tests in order to gouge out the response after being near to and withstanding a detonation. In order to make sure that the military personnel could still function after the shock of the blast, Operation Plum Bob was performed on a group of men based in Fort Bragg who were designated as Task Force Big Bang. The men would watch the nuclear explosion and then disassemble and reassemble the rifles. After that, they would run a course through a minefield and an infiltration course, including obstacles like barriers, walls and foxholes, and the results would be compared to how they did without the nuclear factor. Bizarrely, the psychological evaluation ended up being of little to no use. Prior to running the course, the men had already been exposed to nuclear detonation. Number 2. Operation Big Itch Dugway Proving Grounds became the location of the Biological Warfare Assessment Laboratories in 1954. With that title came the necessity to figure out whether or not insects were viable for use as delivery systems in various types of nasty diseases. Operation Big Itch dropped countless fleas in the Utah desert. Cages of guinea pigs were set up on the ground to gouge how successful the drop was as there were concerns about whether or not the fleas could survive and how much they would spread if they made it to the ground. The fleas were sealed in a container that was designed to rupture at the fringe of a CO2 cartridge at an altitude of 300 to 600 meters, around 1000 to 2000 feet. The experiment was something of a success. The guinea pigs were infested with fleas, but it was also decided that it was necessary to drop the fleas close to the target to make sure that the bugs would make it to their hosts. Number 1. Project Thor. Rods from God. Project Thor was never put into practice, but if it had been, the result might have been absolutely terrifying. In the 1950s, scientist Jerry Pornell was looking at the idea of connecting bombardment, which means launching missiles from space with no explosives and simply letting the power of speed and gravity do the work. The military was looking at ways to make satellites into incredibly deadly weapons. The basics of the idea involved two satellites working together. One is armed with a 6 meter long tungsteel rod no more than 0.3 millimeters in diameter. The second satellite does all the communication and targeting. After the rod is dropped, it's estimated that it will be traveling at around 1100 meters per second when it finally hits the ground. Project Thor never made it off the drawing board thanks to a small part of the Outer Space Treaty in 1967, which made space-based weapons off-limits. That's it guys, thanks again for watching, like this video if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe if you want to hear more shocking facts.